Welcome to Metal Gear Rising Revengeance, a game where you slice and dice, highly inspired by Fruit Ninja, starring Raiden before Estrogen, a Japanese-Brazilian samurai with absurdly thick cheeks, average Filipino president, Pepsi Man and his battle against Pride Soon, a woman that is getting out of hand, cyborg EDP-445 with scissors as weapon, and not to forget, a dog. Join Raiden's journey to fight off the corruption of TikTok in this wonderful and perfectly normal video on Metal Gear Rising Revengeance. We start off our journey in the car escorting Obama's Timu Kausin, only to have our car blocked by a particularly strange man. Bam, he has a succulent looking ass. That is one very menacing red sword. It seems quite perfectly balanced. Oh, maybe it's a bit weak. They should buff it in the next update. This joyful Japanese-Brazilian man is also known as Jetstream Sam. After getting our car almost blown away by a rocket launcher, we are going to die and getting our arse jumped by three average British male. It is time for our main character Raiden to open his shirt and show his true prowess of bringing a sword to a rocket launcher fight. Unlike most games, combat in this game is extremely fluid. It takes some time to get adjusted to the controls, but it does feel very satisfying once you get used to it. You can cut literally anything in this game, from your annoying neighbor's car, your enemy's gotten organs, and even trees. Simulate Terraria in this game. Cutting this huge S3 is destroying my eardrums. After being introduced to the controls, we are immediately greeted with a cutscene. Introducing the first boss of the game, an average size playground pit bull. But this time, it can fire massive death ray laser beam. A minor upgrade to enhance the physical prowess of the pit bull breed. We are also introduced to Cyborg EDP-445. You'll understand the EDP joke later in the video. This bald guy has the ability to make everything dramatic, and also to turn his sword into a giant fucking scissor. It is not every day you see EDP kidnapping the President of the United States. Of course, we're too late to save the princess. And now we have to commit animal violence against the playground pit bull, also known as Metal Gear Ray. Looks like his weakness is his feet, so off we go to obliterate his tiny little feet. If you are too afraid to get hit by the big dog, you could always hold Ninja Run and just spam click light attack like I did here. You gotta play smart, not hard. Oh yeah, Metal Gear Ray can also fire fucking death ray beams from its mouth. I wish my dog can do that to obliterate the loud toddlers. After splitting the pit bull into two, we are advanced to the next stage. Now our objective is to play tech with EDP. We must use our parkour abilities to advance through the stage quickly. Or you know, you can just cut through the obstacles. Absolute peak game design. Apparently, Metal Gear Ray is still alive despite us cutting it in half. It is now much harder to dodge its laser because the stage apparently locks us inside this rooftop. And now his weakness is his weakest jawline instead of his feet. We officially got our first death in this playthrough. We avenge ourselves by jumping and using blade mode to absolutely obliterate its chin. In this game, you can slash rockets apart mid-air, and you'll completely negate their explosions. I love MGR video game logic so much. Now we destroy its chin even more, and tear apart its turret. We can use the rocket's ray shoots as a platform to jump on. That makes complete sense to me. And now we slash apart its other arm, making it a complete vegetable. Oh shit, it's still alive! Welcome back to Temple Run Subway Surfer Jetpack Joyride Rising Revengeance Battle against the Rockets. Before Ray can shoot his laser beam at us, we proceed to jump on him. Now the dog shouldn't be able to wake up anymore. Fuck, we're too late to save Obama. Check out my cool drifting moves though. Off we go to jump onto an ongoing train. Prime Minister! Too little too late, hero. Give war a chance! You know, you could have killed the president much earlier, right? Sam, this isn't the best time to compare sword sizes. Let's go. Now, now. Don't be shy. I don't know about being shy, Sam, but what's wrong with your legs? I am pretty sure the Sam I know is not in a wheelchair. Oh, 
I can't believe I'm getting beaten up by a literal sword wielding vegetable samurai. I guess you could say I did not see that coming. He really just enchanted his Murasama with fire aspect too. The situation just got quite a bit handful. Redden, are you all right? No worries, I'm all left. Just before Sam was able to finish us off, we are rescued by Boris. Now we are inside the spaceship. Looks like they've upgraded our ass. The doctor has a hobby of collecting hands, specifically left ones. I guess you could say his hobby is getting out of hand. Oh wow, another ass shot. My ass and whole body are ready to be launched at 100 km per hour. Now our whole body is upgraded with cybernetic to its maximum potential. Now that I think about it, we're basically a cyborg vegetable. We're also introduced to the stealth mechanic. But in this game, stealth is optional. Did I mention that now we can rip apart enemy spine to restore our health? Introducing the leg tank hybrid monster, also known as Geckos. This leg guy is quite annoying, and will use his legs instead of his turret to beat the living shit out of you. But with enough persistence, we were able to destroy the Geckos with our new and improved blade mode. You can apparently also steal their spines. I did not know walking tanks have spines. Raiden, you gotta stop playing the hit anime gacha game Honkai Star Rail, we gotta move. As we move on, we're warmly greeted with a chainsaw scraping the shit out of our chin. This won't be the last time Raiden's chin gets fucked up. <laughs> Introducing the dog, aka Blade Wolf. This dog packs multiple various deadly weaponries in his arsenal, including Windmill Sideways Beyblade Spin, 3 Swing Combination Attack which is also kinda his primary weapon of attacking, throwing knives to pierce your lungs, charging directly to hit you like a truck, and performing a reverse surgery to your ribcage. Yes, I died a lot in this fight. On the bright side, Blade Wolf does summon goons to aid him in battle. Unlike most games, these goons actually benefits us, as we can steal their spine juices to restore our health. You will be forced to learn the parry mechanic in this game. You can run away to dodge the attacks, but it is very hard to do so. It takes time to get used to the parry system, but once you get used to it, things start to make sense. Right then, the peta is onto us, what have you done? After committing animal violence, we are introduced to enemies with shields. Which really doesn't mean much. And apparently, a helicopter is now chasing us while nuking us. This is a great way to train my temple run skills. Right. What's wrong? We use our newly found rocket launcher to explode a helicopter. But that alone isn't enough. So we also use our sword to slash apart the helicopter pieces by pieces. We kill another hostage we were supposed to rescue. Because I refuse to acknowledge the stealth mechanic. What a nice rooftop, I hope nothing bad will happen. Is that a woman? As a proud member of the League of Legends community, we can't let a real woman distract us. Now, our objective is to infiltrate the Nestle factory. We are introduced to these new cute little hand enemies. Though they're not so cute anymore when they get their hands all over you. We enter the inside of the factory by breaking their fan. Apparently, we could also slash the pillar foundation of the factory for some reason. This stage introduces the player to the AR system. Essentially, we have to avoid the laser and go full stealth mode. But have I mentioned, stealth is optional, but utter chaos is an obligation. Right now, I'm being gunned down by three rapid machine gun turrets. Maybe avoid stealth wasn't the best idea. I absolutely love how Ninja Run automatically deflects all incoming bullets. Damn, we did such a good job with our stealth. Now, we've reached the refining tower. On here, we meet the woman from earlier. Oh god, she is French. I am sorry for her loss. Woman, why are you opening your shirt? That is absolutely haram. Get your hands away from me. Damn, I can fix her. Is that a polearm made out of arms? I am really trying my best to not make any hand punch, you guys do not understand. Introducing Mistral, the handy French woman. 
She really has the upper hand in this fight with the long reach of her spear. We just fought a boss like 10 minutes ago. I absolutely love this game. On the other hand, we can cut her spear and leave her unarmed. I am not sorry for my terrible hand punch. She has the ability to constantly block our attacks. But if you try hard enough, almost anything can bypass the blocking mechanic in this game. We are now fighting on a pipe, truly a very practical boss arena. She uses her whip more often when she loses her arm pole arm. These hand minions can lock onto you and leave you vulnerable to Mistral's attacks. Okay, these hand minions are starting to get annoying. In this phase, Mistral is able to strangle us with her whip. Jokes on her, I am into that. Who knew French woman weakness were ice cold showers? Now we're able to buy the arm pole arm from the shop, some new techniques, and a custom cyborg body. In order to infiltrate Mexico, we must disguise ourselves as the embodiment of their culture. Oh hey, now we own the dog from earlier. Adios, amigos. We are only seen publicly for exactly 7 seconds. What was the point of the costume? Now we are inside the sewer. Naturally, like in every Mexican sewers, we are warmly greeted with the midlife crisis mutant ninja turtle gorillas, also known as the most annoying enemy in the entire fucking game. I am not joking, these gorillas are very brutal and will do anything to crush your skull. They charge at you way too often, and they pretend to be a therapist by hugging you. Hugging me does not solve my gacha addiction problems. Fortunately, they are not immune to stealth. I know I've talked about how stealth is optional and all, but these gorillas are an exception. We meet the annoying arm enemies again. Fortunately, this time we have the arm pole arm weapon. This weapon basically obliterates them and turns us into Beyblade. Oh god, is that a child? Don't worry child, I quit at Genshin Impact 2 years ago after the Inazuma update. There are three giant deadly military like robots, how did this child even survive? We are warmly introduced to the new like robots by being thrown in the air, and of course electrocuted with a plasma blast. This enemy's signature attack is their plasma blast, which basically forces the player to run away from them. However, they are not immune to our spine stealing technique. On the next stage, we are introduced to the cardboard box. This is truly the best way to do stealth in-game. In here, we meet more of the annoying turtle gorillas. This is gonna be painful. I kept getting discovered even though my stealth was near perfect. I really do not understand the stealth mechanic in this game, but I'm not too bothered to learn it either. However, with our tough, unmovable resilience, we were able to commit fully to become an actual cyborg ninja, successfully committing stealth takedown to all the enemies in this stage. Boy, I sure do hope there won't be more annoying enemies. Alright, what the fuck was that? Introducing the Sewer Cyborg Water Striders. They can burn you with a fucking flamethrower. There is water all around us, how are we burning? We meet and beat couple more of the Sewer Water Striders. Then we destroyed some security cameras. We disguise ourselves as a cardboard box to fool the security. And now we're able to exit the sewer and reach the UG maintenance area. In here we beat up some obligatory enemies. Our pole arm really has good AOE capabilities, making the enemies a breeze to fight. That's a lot of brains, I sure do hope those aren't children's. They are. To retrieve important information, desperate measures need to be done. We must become the little arm hand minion goon. There are two options we must choose. Option 1, we could do the stealth as the mission intended. Or option 2, we slap the shit out of the guards alerting the entire warehouse. You guys already know which option is more fun. We successfully infiltrated their database with near perfect stealth. Time to steal some cryptocurrencies. We progress further into the warehouse, only to be greeted with a barrage of missiles. Introducing the least memorable, least liked, and most annoying boss in the entire game, an indoor tank. We need to push the tank away from the narrow hallway, but it keeps pushing us away instead. This is pretty fucking irritating to do. Finally, the tank retreated. Oh god, it transformed into a giant bootleg Gundam. 
I am genuinely getting my ass cheeks clapped by the robot. I don't mean it metaphorically or rhetorically, or poetically or theoretically or any other fancy way. This boss is a fuckfest. If I had to choose the worst boss in the entire game, it would be this one. Let's just get this thing over with. Finally, we're able to progress through the story again. We meet many children trapped inside a glass cage. Right then, you can slash the fucking glass cage open. Oh shit, they're gassing down the children with skibidi toilet gas. The child from earlier is being taken as hostage. Now we are left with two choices. Option A, save the trapped children but kill one child. Or option B, save one child but kill all the trapped children. What a foolish question, I choose option C. Kill the child. After proudly killing a child, we are now driving our Toyota Corolla. Oh wow, the child is still alive. Truly the miracle of Obamacare. The driving is getting kinda too peaceful right now. This is a perfect time to play some Genshin Impact Fontaine update. Oh god, what the fuck? Now we are in a 5 wanted level police chase for posting cringe on Twitter. Of course, the police forces have a perfectly legal concealed rocket launcher to blast us off. Check out my sick heels. Calm down, officer. I have 50 million power in Rise of Kingdoms. Shut the fuck up, libtard. Now we must encounter police brutality as a person of color. However, in act of self-defense, we were able to commit mariachi dance to obliterate the police forces. Oh wow, the tank boss from earlier is now a regular enemy, turning them significantly weaker. Their weakness is electric grenades, as they completely immobilize them in place. From getting our butt cheeks clapped by them to absolutely ripping their components pieces by pieces, it truly feels good. We committed manslaughter to even more policemen, completely ignoring their human rights. Now we enter a perfectly normal office building. Finally, some peace and quiet to myself. The peace and quiet did not last very long. Right now, we are probably committing an immeasurable amount of property damage. The janitors working here deserve to get a raise. We encountered even more police brutality on the rooftop. Damn, the new Spider-Man game looks insane. Seeing all these skyscrapers and tall buildings makes me think. What if Metal Gear Rising was open world? We meet a new type of enemy called Heavily Armed Cyborg. This Heavily Armed Cyborg uses Sledgehammer to smash the player's skull, forcing the players to learn how to parry them. Despite them looking bulky, these are my most favorite basic enemies in the entire game, as they implement new mechanic and don't actually stunlock you unlike previous ones. We blow up another helicopter using a rocket launcher. What happens if we fall? I'm, what's wrong? Alright, that makes sense. We dash through the opposing police forces with perfect stealth. Then we destroyed an office elevator. Have we not caused enough property damage? We must now use our AR system to properly navigate through the inside of an underground subway. Oh god, it is the turtle gorillas again. I have a deep hatred towards these gorillas enemies due to their stunlock mechanic. This time, I tried using stealth, and turns out the stealth here is not too hard. Turns out we took no damage, giving us the S rank. That is pretty awesome. We exited the subway and reached back to the surface. Then we encountered a new type of enemy resembling dogs that are basically wish.com version of Blade Wolf. And yes, they are much, much weaker. Right then, I have turned myself into a VTuber. Hello Twitch chat, this is Jetstream Sam 29 here back with another Minecraft SMP playthrough. What the fuck Sam, that is disgusting. I'd never simp or donate my entire life savings to a VTuber. Listen to them. What are you talking about? Shh. Police, I swear to god, I am not simping for a child. She said she's 500 years old. Our intrusive thoughts are now dominating us, giving us chronic migraine. Raiden can't stop thinking about that one time a 6 foot god girl VTuber mentioned his name on his $500 donation. My name is Monsoon. I can't fucking hear you, you idiot. That's an interesting speech. Unfortunately, I have all my attention towards this cat. I'm afraid to tell you that Among Us meme fell off 3 months ago. You? Doctor, delete my League of Legends account. What? This, this is madness! This is my normal, my nature. 
In this game, we bleed ourselves to death to gain more power. The logic in this game is just awesome. I think it's time for Jack to let her rip. We transform ourselves into Pepsi Man in order to stop Sprite Soon and his plans for world domination. In the battle against Sprite Soon, our ability to parry will be tested greatly. Sprite Soon's most signature attack is concealing himself in smoke gas, ambushing unsuspecting victims with great speed. If you haven't learned how to parry in this game, well, good luck, because you're as good as a small Indian tribe against the whole British Empire. Sprite Soon possesses a variety of deadly and fast combos that only parrying can suffice. And yes, he can split himself into multiple body parts, and each of them has the offensive capabilities to commit manslaughter. Never have I been more scared of a half-body walking leg attacking me. Not only that, using the power of the neurodivergent spectrum, Sprite Soon is able to manipulate and control objects, but he uses it to throw tanks and helicopters at you for some reason. At some phases, it might seem impossible to inflict damage to Sprite Soon. His body parts are experiencing epileptic seizure. However, we can exploit his weakness to electric grenades, completely stunning him and stopping him from being a self-diagnosed ADHD, and also allowing us to smack his YES haircut. As the battle progresses, Sprite Soon becomes more insane, unlocking his hidden deviant art schizophrenic side, allowing himself to split his body to even more parts, and unleashing faster and harder variety of attacks. He can also manipulate huge clumps of tanks and materials and use it to bulldoze over the player. It took me a while to realize that you can actually parry the giant clump. This is so stupid, I fucking love this game. It really was ahead of its time. And don't worry, I did not forget to mention his ability to absolutely obliterate your ribcage. This might be a controversial take, but despite people disliking Monsoon and thinking the fight is hard, I actually enjoy the fight. And I think it is easier than what people usually describe. At his last ditch effort, Sprite Soon throws the Monas Monument of Indonesia at Pepsi Man. Only for us to- wait, that's a wrong scene. Only for us to use it as a leverage to absolutely conquer the Sprite Company with our refreshing and thirst quenching Pepsi Soda. Albeit very trivial commercial. Who worked for the ad team and genuinely thought this was a good idea. Your means and here. Sorry, but I don't use TikTok. We now enter the Riot Office headquarters to complain about the censorship of the new league champion Briar's feet. We also try our new Psy weapon we acquire from defeating Monsoon. This feels like a hook more than a Psy with the way it pulls enemies. It can do some pretty sick combos, but I am not sacrificing my stripper pole of death. Who decided to put a mounted turret gun inside an office building? I want whatever they're smoking. Wow, there are a lot of rocket launchers mounted on the walls. Truly, the average American office experience. I wonder why they don't just ambush us when we're inside this elevator. We now have to survive and run through an average American school hallway on a Tuesday. We use the bird cyborgman as platforms to jump on because fuck physics. Then we run on the side of the building. What was the point of entering the building in the first place? Now we enter what seems to be a small city in Japan. Seriously, how big is this building? Since it is Japan, it is only normal to have ninjas trying to kill us. The Japanese must not be happy with our American presence. To pay respect to the Japanese culture, we must embrace our cyborg ninja self by doing some proper stealth to brutally slaughter innocent Walmart workers before inevitably getting spotted. But we could always use the ancient forbidden technique of running away. But of course the turtle gorilla decided to say fuck you and destroyed Raiden's virginity. So we must eliminate them by applying the ancient Indonesian circumcision method. We completely forget about our dog and now we must face one of the most annoying stage in the entire game. The fucking infinite elevator worthy of an SCP foundation or backrooms fan page. You'll be bombarded with shit on of enemies, but the elevator keeps on going on and will never stop. We did learn how to properly do a Beyblade spin using our sword though, so that's pretty cool. At first, this stage might seem easy, but as it progresses, it becomes more chaotic, due to it spawning more annoying and harder enemy types. However, the biggest factor that makes this level hard is the limited mobility and space to move, since you are trapped inside a very small rectangular area, giving you nowhere to run, and forcing you to deal with all the enemies at a time. I died a lot. But at last, I learned how to effectively use Reaper mode to my advantage. The moment the two gorillas spawn, I immediately turned it on and went to town on them, then finishing it off by throwing a smoke bomb, blinding their side, and leaving them with no window to counterattack. To add salt to the injury, we slash apart the other gorilla midway through his flying sidekick, defeating all the enemies and successfully finishing the level. In the next stage, we are greeted by the French woman we killed earlier, Mistral, but apparently it is just an AI with her body. Man, AI art has gone too far. 
We use her own weapon against her, which also seems to be her weakness, mainly due to its AoE capabilities making the fight absolutely trivial. This is a fucking massacre. Then we are forced to fight Monsoon again. You might call this a boss rush, but I'm pretty sure this is basically filler content, equivalent of a beach episode in every shonen anime. We quickly took care of Monsoon, and now we enter a suspiciously big hall, only to be once again greeted by EDP-445. They're kids, you son of a bitch. And kids are cruel. They just lose touch with it as they get older. Wow, you truly have a hidden talent for speech. Please keep it hidden. All the guys in charge are long gone. We've got offices around the world. Bullshit! War is just part of who we are. Why fight it? Like the good old days after 9-11. What are you talking about? That speech was definitely something. Alright, I'm on the roof now, let's start the fight. Like I said, kids are cruel, Jack. And I'm very in touch with my inner child. Introducing Sundowner, the boss with a peculiar liking towards children. He has six shields attached to him that explodes when you attack them. It is very fucking annoying to deal with. Not to mention, there are helicopters that bombard you with missiles. Fortunately, we can blast away the helicopters using our rocket launcher, turning the fight significantly easier. We must precisely use blade mode to cut through Sundowner's shield. When I said precisely, I really meant it. This fight expresses how deep my hatred is towards the aiming system in blade mode. I can't describe how annoying it is to aim in blade mode using a controller. Though if you pair it right before Sundowner uses his shield dash at you, you'll be able to initiate a quick time event. Utilize this event correctly to shred through his shield. Aside from the shield part, the fight is simple and straightforward, with simple attacks that you can easily parry. But the best part comes when you have successfully taken down all of Sundowner's shield. A Sundowner goes into rage mode, finally unleashing the true potential of his scissor blades. I bought Sundowner scissor blades, and now we're apparently inside a helicopter with Doctor. It only took 15 seconds for us to catch a break before getting bombarded again with a random missile. So of course, the most logical thing to do is hack the entire system of an aircraft using our sword, and use it as a platform to slash a random incoming aircraft at 1500 miles per hour into two. It definitely was a good idea to do that. Raiden gets his chin obliterated for the second time in this game. We fail to catch the helicopter, and we get to experience a very lucky opportunity of falling 36,000 feet from the sky. Yet we somehow miraculously survive. Now we get to use Sundowner scissor weapon using Burger King employees as our test subject. It is terribly slow and impractical to use, I do not like it. In this stage, we encountered and eliminated a few heavy machinery, property of the US government. Ah, so this is where all the US resident taxpayer money goes to. Giant fucking robot with legs. Only to realize that now we must progress through the most fun and creative stage in the entire game. That was sarcasm because this stage was just the stage we played before fighting Monsoon, but we get to play it backwards. There really isn't much to say about this level. Pro life hack. Vehicles parked for more than 5 minutes are free property. We are now driving peacefully using our newly obtained motorcycle. Surely a random Japanese Brazilian man wouldn't stop us in the middle of the road. Oh wow, shiver my timbers. <laughs> well, not if you say it like that. I have not even said a single word. Oh, good. <laughs> Why, that's very good. Yes, I like that. Pack it up, Skittle Squad. Okay. Let's dance! 
Hmm, I'm really not sure beating up a crippled minority is the best idea in this day and age. Introducing Jetstream Sam, a Japanese Brazilian man wielding a high frequency blade, capable of cutting through almost anything, known as Murasama. Sam is incredibly fast and agile despite owning very thick, tight and supple cheeks. Do not question the game developers on why they gave Sam butt cheeks double the size of a regular model. Sam is able to unleash a variety of devastating sword techniques that he learned from watching too much hentai in his free time. This battle focuses on testing how well you handle the controls in this game. The true test is mainly shown by how Sam has the most amount of pairing capabilities in this game. Yes, yeah, Sam can easily parry your attacks if you are not careful and will slash apart your ribcage. He has more than 3 parrying techniques and all of them deals devastating damage. This boss fight is my most favorite fight in the entire game. It is extremely well balanced between being hard but not frustrating. And it is very satisfying to parry Sam's sword clashes. Once you bring Sam's HP down by around 35%, you'll initiate his phase 2 by disarming his sword. You will think the fight will get easier because he literally lost his main fucking weapon. But you'd be terribly wrong, because Sam can now brutally fist you and slam your head to the ground, causing immense amount of chronic migraine. Too bad I already have brain damage, so it can't get any worse. In this phase, you'd want to keep your distance well between you and Sam to give yourself enough reaction time, and you'd want to avoid his fisting range at all costs. The real and most fun part of the fight starts when Sam picks up his Murasama once more. As Sam finally unleashes the true potential of a Brazilian samurai with crippling hentai addiction. Yes, he's been holding back this entire time. Unlocking new variations of attacks that are even more devastating, faster and more brutal than ever before. Oh yeah, he can also throw rocks at you now for some reason. I'd like to mention that I had already beaten Sam earlier. However, I was using Mistral Ball Arm to chase his face too. Turns out a good friend of mine told me that you were supposed to fight Sam with blade only, like true swordsman. So there goes away 3 hours of my time. But you know what? It was worth it. <laughs> He barely had any cyborg enhancements. ID locked. A VT7 high frequency blade. <laughs> We have less than one hour, hurry! So we just completely forget about our motorcycle. That's fine. Oh, oh, the age of consent is 18 years old. Over here! Oh god, I forgot I had a child. Dad, can you please pay my child support? Oh, it seems that we've run out of milk. Dad's gonna head out and get some milk first. You son of a bitch. After committing child neglect, we finally arrive in Pakistan to stop the second 9-11, with the sole purpose of recovering the war economy. I am not even joking about stopping the second 9-11 part, it is literally the main story. That's the beauty of this game, you never know whether I'm joking or not. We proceed to carefully and stealthily infiltrate an airbase. Fuck it, we're basically at the final stage of the game anyways, it's too late to consider stealth now. Damn dog, you good? Saucy Jack. Check the internet lately. Raiden, they, they leaked our group chat. What? How'd they know? They're shipping you with Sam. Show me. That's just the spark, son. America's wanted this war for years. The memes. We don't need them around to filter and foster their memes any longer. We're spreading them just fine ourselves. Every American man, woman, and child. We're all sons of a patriots now! Excuse me, sir. This is a Wendy's.
Introducing Metal Gear Excelsus, a giant mecha based of average high spiders in Australia. Excelsus can slam his giant pincer blades to the ground, stomping the player in the process. In order to damage the boss, you must wait for it to land its attacks, as you can only deal damage by attacking its giant pincers. Optionally, you can wait for the boss to stomp its legs, but it is quite rare. This battle tests your patience and special awareness with how you are forced to abruptly end your combos, so that you can create spacing between yourself and the boss and use ninja run or jump to dodge the attacks. If you are not patient, believe me, you will get knocked very fucking often. You can parry its giant blade, however, it deals a small amount of damage to yourself, so running would be the better option whenever possible. Simplified, this fight is fucking hard. Finally, we were able to take it down. Raiden uses his blade to break apart the mecha's Nico Nico kneecaps, giving us an opportunity to climb its legs. After after slicing one of the legs down, we can initiate Excelsus Phase 2. Excelsus can summon a few Gecko armies in between its phases. Before shooting a gigantic death ray laser beam to blast both you and its own geckos for some reason. This is taking friendly fire to the next level. The death ray beam will absolutely incinerate your asshole, do not get hit by it. On the bright side, you can steal the gecko's fine juices to heal yourself up. I became impatient with spacing myself with the boss, so I resorted to parrying instead. As I was on my lowest HP, I parried one last time, only to realize that Raiden can't die by parrying. Trust me, my whole body was pumping with pure focus and adrenaline to parry every single one of its attacks. A battle against a gigantic mech typically means the final battle of a game. Despite that, this is just a calm before the storm. To finish it all off, we flip the giant mecha using our own pure, unfiltered, raw strength. Holy shit, this is the greatest quick time cutscene of all time. Stick around and find out. Introducing Senator Armstrong, a totally normal, passionate, and enthusiastic US politician. This fight may seem normal at first, only to realize that we are barely dealing any damage to Armstrong. This is not a fight, this is a fucking massacre. What? Nice, nice. Oh shit, he almost got my chin. Yep, that's the third time Raiden Shin got absolutely destroyed in this game. The developers must really hate Raiden Shin. All you care about is lining your own pockets, that, and your approval ratings. You've got no principles. Oh, just like all the rest. Oh. Oh. Fuck all these lunatic lawyers, the chicken shit bureaucrats. Fuck this 24 7 internet spew of trivia and celebrity bullshit! Fuck American pride! Fuck the media! Fuck all of it! What the hell are you talking about? So, what do you think? How the hell did you get elected? I'll rid this world of pointless wars, Jack. Wrong. 
You're not greedy. You're batshit insane! The mother of all omelets here, Jack. Can't fret over every egg. With your own two hands, you took back your life. And now, I'll take yours. Welcome to the second round of our fight against Senator Armstrong. Since he broke our blade, we are forced to utilize our fist to fight. But yet again, our effort was as useless as paying taxes to the Indonesian government, as we couldn't even leave a scratch mark on Armstrong. <laughs> Alright, let's do this one last time. Introducing the ultimate form of Senator Armstrong. In this form, Senator utilizes his nano machines to strengthen himself, improving his physical capabilities and giving him access to new insanely powerful abilities that defies the laws of physics. By slamming his iron fist, Armstrong can cause various volcanic explosions to erupt from the ground. These explosions will result in firewalls to surround the arena, usually followed by Senator striking you down. Not to mention, Armstrong can focus his nano machines to strengthen specific parts of his body, including his head. He might be ahead of you, but don't let him get over your head. <laughs> However, after obtaining Sam's Murasama, we're given the chance to win what seems to be a one-sided battle, as Murasama is much stronger than Raiden's original blade, having the ability to pierce through Armstrong's thick and defensive nanomachine skin. Armstrong can disarm our Murasama, but noting a full body flying kick to the ribcage can't fix. Usually, after disarming us, Armstrong will heal himself, forcing us to retrieve our Murasama quickly, and we must use it to strike his back and put a stop to his healing process. Every now and then, Armstrong will throw boulders at us. This one specific attack proves how much I absolutely despise aiming in blade mode. This game was made 10 years ago, but it is still better than most AAA genre games nowadays, as this fight alone expresses what it means to have an ultimate final battle against a worthy and strong opponent. If the words are too complicated for you to understand, it is big boss fight. Yeah! 
ahead and <coughs> please delete my 50 derb. <coughs> my 50 derb, I took this. <coughs> I'm dead to go ahead and die. <coughs> what? I wonder when my dad will come back. And that's Metal Gear Rising, but I'm insane.